how do you accelerate the trust building process when adding to the team, when working with someone, could be an investor? How do you advise me actually struggling to hire because of the lack of trust? I think that, um, of course, if you're going to get married to someone, if you're going to like start a co-founding relationship, you, you, you can't like fly through co-founders. I mean, I guess maybe some people do. Um, I think the premise that like, or, or the, the constraint that you have to hundred percent trust every single person is just not right. Like, I also think it's right. Like in hiring, you just need to hire a bunch of people and realize your hit rate's not going to be a hundred percent. That's okay. Like this isn't a like forever thing. Like who holds a job forever? No one, like very few people. Um, and instead just optimize for minimizing the chance of getting it wrong subject to moving quickly enough and and if it's wrong move really fucking quickly about making the change and i think actually that last part is the part people have the most problem with not actually trusting people if it's it's when it's not working moving quickly because it's so hard to screen in a few interviews and a coffee or whatever like whether or not you can trust someone for life or whether they're the right person for this chapter of the company it's just not possible so you just got to move on it with the best of intentions on both sides and move really quickly if it's not working. Did you move quickly when it wasn't working? Well, I certainly tried a, a bunch of times, which, <laughs> yes. Uh, I think there are probably like three examples in the last year and a half I can name that where that happened, yes. F and then there were thought. times where we didn't or I didn't, and I think we regretted that. And... um it's just a lesson you're learning over and over again running a company is just like you need to be a compassionate leader you need the right person in the right in the right spot and you need to like help them be great and if it's not the right fit for whatever reason you just you move on it and i think that's something a second time founder will do that a first time founder has a lot of trouble doing yeah it's i think a final, lot of the second time founder one. is like finding like the ways in which you have to go against basic human psychology and empathy because you think like your first instinct maybe as a first time founder is like oh the compassionate thing it's like even though it's not working we'll try to make it work and like have the fifth conversation like you know and then the second time you're like well maybe the empathetic thing is like realize when it's not working and make that move i think can i talk about music for a second because i have to bring it in i can't right I, yeah, I heard this thing on npr this morning it was so fascinating i have to find this paper and the story but there were these researchers. This is one of these like puff pieces that NPR throws in in the middle of like uh, their morning show. And but it was actually super interesting about um, how basically these researchers figured out how much of a clip of a song they have to play you before you can form a very strong opinion of whether you hate it or love sure. it. Huh. And they found that the shortest they could do was five seconds. But like I'm gonna quote this wrong, and I need to actually find this paper. But it seemed like to me. The difference between like five and 10 and 30 seconds was very, very small. Like all you need is five seconds and you're like, I got it. This is great. Or I got it. This is not great. In general with talent, you can tell very, very quickly in a working scenario, whether someone generally, gen not five seconds, obviously, but generally is going to work or isn't going to work. There's that middle ground with like where you don't know, but in a small startup, I feel like it's fairly short and I think just like getting a better spidey sense for detecting that in the hiring process is what keeps you from having all this pain of churn throughout time. And like, I, I just, I think it like, isn't it like, um, uh, uh, Kahneman and, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the other guy, uh, help me out. Mike. Yeah. 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 Uh, they, the whole quick slicing thing, right? Like, yeah. it's just like, I think in general, your goal as a founder is to figure out how quickly you can detect whether or not someone's going to work in a role without having hired them yet to save them the pain and you the pain of having to make a hard change but then being a founder making the hard change even though it's painful i met someone recently they were just boring I've, i'm i'm they're capable i've <laughs> trialed them i've tried i've trialed them they can do the work but they are boring they are not fun they are so quiet uh, they're not that bad harry sometimes that's a feature not a bug sometimes <laughs> you want like someone who's not highly volatile or cracking jokes all the time um it just depends what you want i don't know like in your scenario if you have to spend a bunch of time with them travel with them in a small office like then i guess 
personal chemistry really matters. But Mike, we've worked with plenty of people where we didn't have personal chemistry, but they were great at what they did. And like, that's fine. And in fact, as a small company, one of our mistakes on Instagram was hiring too many like mission hipsters that wore plaid and really like drinking bourbon. Like that was stupid. Like we should have just been hiring the greatest people out there. Um, I think it depends on the t- size of team and the dynamic, but like I, it's a, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't think being a fun person should be a requirement for a job. I think it's okay to be kind of boring, I guess. <laughs> do you, Mike, do you agree? Or I, I like, yeah, I mean, I think it goes, it comes down to like, uh, you kind of want the, the team composition to have, you know, at least, you know, a, a sizable group of people where you draw energy from them. I think if your whole team is made up of people, you're like, oh, they're fine. But like, they're, you know, they're good at their jobs, but they're not like sparking energy. I think your own day to day is not going to be exciting, but I don't think that has to be everybody. And I think, uh, I think you can find that balance around. Yeah. Like some people are just quietly executing and doing that and they're probably not going to bring you an idea that's going to blow your mind but they're like executing really well on the things that they're that they're doing i would just be wary of an entire team of that would probably be kind of not super fun to 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 work with would you ever hire a brilliant prick <laughs> no in no. fact we have we have throughout our careers 100 percent, and it's the worst yeah, yeah. It's like, this, this is what Kevin running. was saying before you joined. It was a bit awkward, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the worst. Okay, final one. Uh, like, would you have like insanely smart? Oh, sorry, not insanely smart. Like, incredibly ambitious and hungry, or like super experienced IQ, experienced IQ, or hungry hustler ambitious. I think the phase, the the different phases of the company require different kind of people you know i think you always want somebody who's excited about what you're doing and uh and willing to jump in i've i've always been happy with people who have the sort of raw talent and desire to learn and don't see boundaries as a reason to stop working on something like that's a repeated theme i've I've hit like the people i love working with are the ones that don't come up you know if they're ios engineers and they start having to do back end work they don't throw up their hands and go "Ah, that's not my problem like somebody else go like please like please help me here it's the people that you're like, you know what? Like I, um, like one of our engineers was like, oh, you know, I haven't really done marketing stuff before, but somebody needs to put together our Google play store page. Like I'm going to go learn like what other companies are doing. Like I'm going to put together a proposal, like that sort of like desire to not see, uh, you know, your role is strictly defined by like the four bullet points that you think you do. That's to me, the kind of people I repeatedly like working with. Now, once you scale, there's sometimes reasons why there are boundaries between teams. Like there's more process. Like you wouldn't want necessarily like your, you know, excellent mobile engineer being like, you know what? I rethought how we should do our scaling when you're like, you know, serving over a billion people. So you start creating more of that, but especially at our scale. And honestly, for the next few years, like um, it's raw talent, ability to learn quickly, ability to not define themselves strictly by the role that they were brought in to do. Um, and, and that, that leads you well. But if you have only that and you don't have any people who have expertise, it can also lead you down this other other side of things where you're like, you know, just being enthusiastic about a, a, an area isn't necessarily going to determine that you're going to be able to be to be good at it. So it's it's that it's that community of like expertise, interest, and selflessness is like the kind of like core combination that I seek. After hearing your comments on Brilliant Prick, I now know why you didn't offer me a job. But all good. Thank you.